we uh, been working uh, with K-12 parents, educators, uh, students, uh, education community. Uh, this has been since the very beginning, since the first case, uh, we've been working uh, uh, hand in hand, arm in arm, collaboratively. And I just wanna say right off the bat, you know, the gratitude I have for everybody involved in education in North Dakota. Uh, on behalf of Superintendent Baszler and myself, we wanna say thank you to all of you uh, who've been navigating so well through this rapidly evolving situation. And as we look towards school, everybody says, what's school gonna look like in the fall? Uh, but I wanna take a moment and say again, thank you to everybody because we did execute this spring uh, on a very rapid, unexpected, uh, never before seen having to take uh, 120,000 school kids in North Dakota and move to distance learning in a matter of weeks. Uh, really remarkable. We know that other, in other states and in some districts in other states, when school closed, they did not even begin distance learning. So as for all the challenges we had in distant learning, we were still engaging students, we were still moving and working, we were learning learning as parents, learning as teachers, learning as administrators, uh, learning and, and growing in terms of how do we deliver education during a pandemic. And the pandemic has changed the delivery of education as we know it, and it's gonna change it throughout this school year and maybe longer, it's, gonna, it's, it's uh, challenging all, everybody involved in education to become more innovative, to become more nimble and more responsive to the needs of students wherever they may be. And we've also learned, of course, through this whole thing, we said that the, it, it, we learned new things. We had uh, the, we, the importance of the student-teacher relationship was always well known. It became critically important. I think parents became more empathetic of that as they had to step into the role of helping teach at home. But it's a critically important element to the educational success and the well-being of the, every child. And uh, I think also for teachers, it helped them create greater empathy of what was going on in the homes and the challenges that some students might have been facing on the home front. So greater empathy by both parents and teachers, uh, uh, one positive element of this. COVID-19 uh, forced us to adopt new practices and technologies at a really incredible and startling rate. Uh, and we confirmed what we've known to be true, which is that no stu student learns the same way. And we have a, uh, a responsibility uh, as the funders, as the adults, as the deliverers of education to make sure that during this time of pandemic that we serve every student, those that are challenged and those that are gifted uh, in ways that we can and using all the tools that we have. And that's gonna mean for us as adults that we have to do things differently than, than and like never before, educators have an opportunity to combine the strengths of multiple delivery models. They can use technology where it works well. Uh, uh, providing student voice and student choice, and then maintaining the foundation of education, which is that student and teacher relationship. Distance learning in North Dakota was successful in many ways, uh, but it, it challenged relationships, and it's also uh, important that we step back and say, what did we learn from, from doing those millions of days cumulative? I mean, it was over a couple of months in the spring, but times over over 100,000 students a day, millions of student days worth of, of distance learning to learn what worked and what didn't work. I mean, this is a, a opportunity for us to move decades ahead in our understanding of what we can do to serve, serve all of our students. Since March 13th, when we first issued the COVID-19 related, related guidance for educators, educators, tribal leaders, stakeholders, uh, everybody's engaged, the Department of Public Instruction, the Department of Health, the governor's office, uh, and as you recall, we closed schools to in-person instruction due to COVID-19 on March 15th. That was just four days after the first case was identified, uh, and, for, and that was on a Sunday. And so in some cases, uh, first case was Wednesday, press conference Thursday morning, Friday, some schools didn't have school. Sunday, we closed schools. Uh, I think of this like turning off a light switch. That was, uh, uh, that was the easy part. It was a hard decision, important, difficult decision. Reopening the schools is gonna be a, a much more of a challenge than it was to close them, and it's gonna take more leadership from more people across the state. By April 1, all public schools had their distance learning plans approved for implementation. Again, great job uh, to our 175 school districts. School buildings were closed to students. The essential staff continued to plan, serve, and support uh, 
students uh, in both public and non-public settings across the state. And again, that included important missions like the nutrition mission where the staff came in and was cooking and serving and delivering meals. And again, I can't stress again how grateful that Superintendent Basler and I are for the monumental task accomplished this past spring in transitioning the students to a learning model. We couldn't have done it without the dedication, the support of teachers, leaders, communities, uh, state partners, and of course, parents uh, who took on huge new roles. So now, here we are. North Dakota's got low positivity rates, which we talked about at the beginning. Uh, we've got a North Dakota smart and committed population that's, uh, that remains uh, vigilant to make sure we're not getting complacent. We're gonna make sure that we're gonna continue to have low numbers going forward to give us the best chance of reopening uh, in the uh, late summer and fall. And we are now today gonna be talking about uh, the updated North Dakota Smart K-12 Restart Guidance uh, with an effort to reopen K-12 buildings as one of the tools uh, that we can use uh, because uh, th this is where the, the buildings were closed but the schools were not this last spring. The school mission carried on but without the use of the buildings. But this is new territory for all of us. Uh, you know, we acted swiftly and smartly to close schools to in-person instruction. That is probably one of the reasons why we uh, avoided the fate of some other states that had the big uh, upswings last spring. We have not yet had to manage in-person teaching and learning uh, for these 121,000 K-12 students during the COVID-19 pandemic. So this has uh, always been uncharted territory. Uh, and now we move into new territory this fall with a dual purpose. Uh, we need to focus on providing the highest quality quality education to all of our students. Uh, and we also have to safeguard the health and safety of those students and the staff and the faculty and the administration and their families that they go home to, including their grandparents and others that are most vulnerable in the communities in which these schools operate. And so this dual mission of both education and public health uh, is gonna add uh, some new challenges and some new thought processes and new, uh, new efforts to what we've had to do in the past when we think about the, the normal kind of big effort of getting back to school every fall. But in the last several months, we've collaborated with education associations, tribal leaders, stakeholders, and partners on the reopening. A, uh, the, you know, one of the clear themes emerged, which is they wanted to have timely guidance to help plan for in-person instruction. Uh, there's certainly a desire among parents and others to get back to the resumption of extracurricular activities and other programs. And today we're providing that guidance for all North Dakota public schools in our K-12 Smart Restart guidelines 